Hi and welcome to this QuickBooks training video. Today we're going to look at how to deal with the situation when a customer of yours bounces a check. How are you going to deal with that in QuickBooks? So there's this is kind of a tricky transaction for a lot of QuickBooks users because there's no icon to click on, there's no menu item to choose that says, uh, you know, if you have a bounce check, click here. So we have to kind of make our own procedure for this, and we've done that. So I'm going to show you the easiest way to do that uh, in QuickBooks. So I'm going to say that our customer here, Renee Barley, she made a $400 payment, and that has come back to us from the bank. Now, there are two charges on that notice from the bank. Obviously, there's the $400 check, but there's also a service charge. In our case, I'm going to say that's $15. The first thing I need to do is I need to deduct those amounts from our checking account balance. To do that, I'm going to click on Check Register, and then I'm going to record those two transactions. So I'm going to do the service charge first, and I really don't need a name for that. I'm just going to record the $15 charge to bank service charges. And then I'm going to record the $400 deduction for the bounce check. And for this, I am going to use the customer's name. And QuickBooks doesn't try to fill that out like it would a vendor because she's a uh, customer and it's really expecting vendors here in the checking account. All right, so there's our customer. Now, uh, let me just make a note here that I'm going to choose the repair job under Renee Barley. Now your QuickBooks file may not have jobs, but this one does. And I know that the, the original payment was made to that repairs job. So that's what I want to pick. It's going to make the procedure easier for me. The other thing that I need uh, that's a little unusual is instead of an expense account, which is what we would usually have in this field, I am going to record this transaction to accounts receivable. All right, so now my checking account balance is $415 less than what it was before. And that takes care of that part of it. Now, the next thing I need to do, and I'm assuming that this was a customer payment, so uh, something that I used the receive payments function in QuickBooks in order to record. I'm going to go to and find that original payment. The easiest way to do that is to go to the customer center, find the customer and the job, and here is the original transaction, a payment for $400. I'm going to double click on that. This is the way the payment was originally recorded when I received that check from her. Of course, I thought it was a good check at the time, and so it paid the balance of this particular invoice. Well, here is, on the second line, this is the amount that I just put into the check register for $400 because that check came back. So I'm going to uncheck the first line and I'm going to check the second line. What this accomplishes is it makes the balance due from the invoice the amount that is due from the customer. So that returns all of the aging to the correct amount, or the correct date, I should say. So my reports will show correctly. My um, statements that I send to the customer will show correctly how old that invoice really is, because that invoice really wasn't paid. It was paid with a bad check. The uh, other thing that it will do is if I use finance charges in QuickBooks, it will make those finance charges uh, compute correctly because this invoice has never been paid so QuickBooks should be looking all the way back to when the due date of that invoice was in order to um, compute those finance charges so this procedure is what makes all of that work okay so now I'm going to close the customer center now the customer owes me the $400 now. I've taken care of that part of it. But probably I have a service charge that I want to charge them. I mean, I had to pay a service charge to the bank. Undoubtedly, there was a service charge that you charge to customers for bouncing a check. So to do that, I'm going to create an invoice so that the customer owes me that money. And when I create that invoice, I have to have an item to put on there to show that it's a service charge for a bounced check. Now, I've already created that item, 
in this QuickBooks file. Just let me show you that. So I'll look at the item list. It's an other charge type item right here. So other charge, I called it NSF for non-sufficient funds fee. Uh, you could put a different description in there if you wanted to. Um, whatever you wanted to put in there. Uh, just as long as it works the way as, as this one does. Uh, the amount is going to be $25 in this case. Uh, yours may be different. Uh, it's non-taxable, of course. And I've just told QuickBooks to record these transactions to the bank service charges. This is actually income. I'm going to put it on an invoice, so it's going to be a negative expense. It's going to show as a negative on my uh, reports for expense accounts. But that's okay. Uh, some people may want it to an income account that's for bank service charges. You know, you probably don't get too many of those, so I don't know if you want to use that uh, particular solution or not. But that uh, you can put whatever account works for you here. A lot of people are just going to use the bank service charges expense account. So since I have my item, I can create an invoice. And I'll just skip right down here to the item field, use my NSF fee uh, item. QuickBooks gives me this warning, uh, said, and you're going to see this as well. This item is associated with an expense account. That's because it's recording to that bank service charge expense account. And QuickBooks would normally expect an invoice to be income. Uh, that's okay. This is an unusual situation. We know that, <clears throat> and it's what we really intend. So I'm going to click OK. So we have the $25 amount. It's non-taxable. It's possible I could want to change the invoice number if my invoice numbering system were important to me. Uh, you can make that determination. In this case, I'm just going to click Save and Close. So now Renee owes me the, four, the $425, which is the correct amount. $25 service fee, the $400 check. At this point, I've really done everything that I need to do that, um, in, in order to record that uh, bounce check. When I receive the replacement check from the customer, when Renee sends me that check, there's nothing special I have to do. I'll go through the receive payments function just like I uh, would at any time and record that payment against the invoice that's there and the invoice for the service charge, the $25, that will be there as well. So all that will work just as normal. Then I'll include it in the next deposit, just as I normally would. Now, if this was uh, a check that you received not as a customer payment, but it was directly in a deposit transaction or something like that, you would skip the part where you would reapply the payment in the original receive payment window. Otherwise, you can follow the procedure just as it was, but you won't have that original payment to go back to to uh, reclassify that. So that's you would skip that part. Other than that, everything works just fine. So I hope this is helpful to you. It should uh, show you how to record and track those bounce checks that you occasionally get from your customers. We have other QuickBooks training videos uh, online here. I hope you will take the opportunity to take a look at those. Hopefully those will help you with your QuickBooks issues as well. Thanks.